Hello, our fabulous chemistry students. Both your teachers are here. Oh, that's both of us. Yep. And video number two, let's do our vocabulary, get you ready for your quiz. And just hint, hint, um, you don't have all the time in the world, so if you've been doing, <laughs> if you haven't been doing homework, you know, you're just wasting your own time in, school, in class. I had some students still doing vocabulary today. Yeah, and we're like ready to test out of like, organic. Right. Wake up. Hello. Get moving. All right. Um, isotope. One of two or more atoms with the same number of protons, but having different masses. Back Review. to the beginning of the year. Oh, that's, that's, Atomic theory. That's the one thing I like about doing this unit last, is it really does serve as a good prep to redo, revisit atoms in a minute. Isotopes. Radio isotope. It's a naturally or artificially produced radioactive isotope of an element. Some elements are created radioactive. Certain abundances. Those things are called radioisotopes. Yep. If it is radioactive and it is an isotope, it is a radioisotope. Well, well put. Radioactivity, the emission of radiation or particles caused by the spontaneous <laughs> disintegration of atomic nuclei. Basically, the nucleus is so big it's starting to fall apart. Yeah. Unstable. We'll and learn after 83 protons. That's just too many pluses. Yeah, the ratio of protons to neutrons. Unstable elements. Unstable. Which brings us to nuclear stability. How do you know if a nucleus is going to fall apart or not? Well, if it's too big, it will fall apart. It has specifically to do with the ratio of neutrons to protons in the nucleus. The neutrons are kind of like the glue that helps all those positive protons stay together, even though they're all positively charged and they don't want to be. Once you get past a certain point, a certain ratio of protons to neutrons, there's nothing you can do. That nucleus is going to fall apart at some point. So that what is that's what we're talking about. We're talking about nuclear stability. Right. Is it gonna be radioactive? Is it a radioisotope? Or is it stable? Right. Now so all year long we've been talking about protons are king, protons you can't add or subtract protons. And guys, we really still can't do that. Right. They kinda do it themselves when there's so many of them. Because this whole unit is called nuclear chemistry. It's about the nucleus and the changes it right. undergoes. The nuclei, an atomic species character is by a con by the constitution of its nucleus, basically how many protons and neutrons does it have? Based, uh, you know, uh, there's two forms of uranium. Right. They differ based on what's in the nucleus. How many nuclides of uranium are there? Two. Nuclide, radioisotope, and isotope are very, very yeah. much synonymous. It's like a species of a what radioactive. If, how many element. nucleides are does carbon for carbon create? Well, there's three or four different nucleides. One or two of them are radioisotopes. The rest of them are stable. So nuclide, radioisotope, isotope, they all kind of work together. Yeah, it's kind of like a species. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is my turn again? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, catch my typo. Total atomic mass of the reactants equals the total atomic mass of the products. We're going to do a bunch of practice with the conservation of mass. We're going to ask you to figure out the missing radioisotope or nucleide in a radioactive transmutation or decay, and you have to use this concept to figure it out. I just want to note he said catch his typo, not mine. Yeah, fair. Natural transmutation, when an element turns into a different element all by its little self, you're going to find out that when we see it, there will only be one reactant. It just happens naturally, spontaneously, if you will. And so, so funny that you can't even predict when it'll do it. You have to predict what the half-life would be instead. We'll get there, though. Yes. Um, artificial transmutation, guess what? These are man-made. So when we take an element and turn it into a different element, the help of another particle, there are two reactants. This is or was the original for founding notion behind alchemy and chemistry. I want to turn this element into that element. I right. want to transmute it artificially. It was they just the search for the particle accelerators no. then to get an electron flying fast enough to well, cut it, it, it was atom. like 1200, you know, right, beginning right. of the dark ages. You wanted to turn lead into gold right because right. you'd be rich now we're going to talk about fission and fusion um fusions come second but that's the one that makes sense to me and i can figure out what fission is after that fission is specifically splitting a heavy parent nucleus into lighter daughter nuclei so i'm literally going to cut it with something mm -hmm. usually artificially with a neutron or something fusion is the exact opposite it's like a synthesis you're creating a heavier element or bigger element 
from two lighter nuclei. Right. To fuse means to like bring two things together and lock them as one. For sure. So that would make sense. Fusion is technically the way that all of the elements known to exist right. have been created. Well, that's naturally. what's going on in the sun and in all the stars. And, and we get into that a little bit. You guys, and when they go supernova. you guys supernova. will be a little impressed. When the sun goes supernova, there's so much heat and pressure that it makes new elements from all the ingredients that it had inside its core. Right. All the elements up to uh, heavier than iron, nice. actually. An alpha particle is a positively charged particle consisting of two protons and two neutrons. In summation, it is the nucleus of a helium atom. It's been stripped of its electrons. True. That's why it's considered just a particle. A helium nucleus is an alpha particle, so synonymous. Yes. Notice the definition for alpha particle is not alpha particle. Yeah, when you're doing your vocab <laughs> quiz. All right. Duh. All right. Okay. Uh, beta particle, radioactive particle equivalent to an electron. Yes, so that is a beta particle. Guess what? <laughs> Electron's a beta particle. Right. Again, notice the definition for beta particle is not beta particle. And also, these aren't so dangerous. We'll see later on. Yeah, they yeah, you know. Not all radioactivity is going to get you into any new crazy no, so, mutant ninja some, turtle. Yeah, okay? some cardboard will protect you for, from some of this stuff. Or your shirt. Seriously. <laughs> So a positron is a weird kind of particle. It's a positively charged electron or a positive beta particle. Yeah, the weird thing is about it, I did some research on it today even. It's got the exact mass of an electron. But it has the right. opposite charge. But it has the opposite charge. So it's, it's really literally weird. an electron that changed charge. It's so weird. And I think they're created from like the decomposition of neutrons or something like that. It is. It is exactly So like a it. neutron. Let, don't let me get over into that. No, 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 no. Moving on. Moving on. Proton, positively charged elementary particle that is fundamental constituent of every atom in its nucleus. It Remember, gives, protons are king. It gives the identity of the element. They, have, they king. Yep. They have mass and charge. Neutron, that's the elementary particle having no charge, but the mass is slightly greater than that of a proton and much larger than that of an electron. Right. So protons not, and not neutrons... King, no. No, he doesn't have charge. No, no. But in nuclear chemistry, they are important because oh, they right. help determine the stability of the radioisotopes. <laughs> All right, here's the granddaddy of the uh, radioactive emissions. Yeah, this one's the bad one. It's the most penetrating radi radio uh, radiation. Neither the atomic number or the mass number has changed. It is just pure energy, yeah. and it goes through basically everything. This is the type of emission that is the boogeyman of radioactivity. This is like when you think of, oh my God, I'm getting radioactivity, blah. Right. It's really gamma emissions that you're getting exposed yeah, to. Yeah, if you think those suckers is gonna kill get you. messed up, this is what it's gonna do. Those suckers are killing you. These things are such high energy photons that if they run into any molecule in your body, it literally smashes it into pieces. So imagine it running into your DNA. Your DNA gets smashed to pieces. You have a trouble replicating your cells. Your cells start Just to replicate. Just in that one spot, though, too. What's that? Well, true, but you know, your cells start to replicate out of control. You got the big C, cancer. Right. Or radiation. Now, now we're scared and we're not doing our, our vocab anymore, so we're moving on. Yeah. Half life. The time that it takes for half of the atoms in a current sample to decay radioactively or how long bef till I have half of the sample I started with. Mm -hmm. And this is a statistical constant, too. Yes. It, we can't predict when, per se, that a particle is going to decay, but we know how long it's going to take for half of them to decay. It's right. kind of weird. And you can't speed this up or slow it down. That's why I said no, it's a constant. It you is. Can't, doesn't matter not, how hot. doesn't matter yeah. pressure. doesn't matter any of that nuclear stuff. Nuclear reactions don't abide by the rules for yeah, collision they, theory. They don't care about us. They don't. And they don't follow those rules with particle size and all that other stuff. Radioactive decay, this is another common term, just, just the process by which the nucleus of an unstable atom loses energy by emitting radiation. Sometimes it's a particle, sometimes it's light, including alpha particles, beta, gamma rays, and or positrons. Right. So good, good old-fashioned generic definition. It's just what radioactivity is, man. And that's what we're doing. So listen, you know your vocabulary. These are your key words to be using this unit. Study them up, get ready for your quiz, and let's get moving on. Come on, rapid, rapid, rapid. Let's go. Boom! Uh.